We are honored to have the Musial family with us to present the Lifetime Achievement Award, including Stan's daughters, Jean Musial Edmonds and Janet Musial Schwarzy. They are joined by Dave Edmonds, Dr. Martin Schwarzy, Brian Schwarzy, Julie and Jeff Linehan, Jeff Musial, Matt Sears, and Lindsay Musial Sears. Our thanks to all of them for being here tonight. And now the recipients of the 2019 Stan Musial Lifetime Achievement Award for Sportsmanship, Bart Connor and Nadia Komenich. Congratulations. Have a seat. Let's have a little discussion. Wow. Thank you both. I have one tissue left. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. I happen to know about their heart. Bart stopped me backstage and he said to me, we've met before. And I said, yes, I have hosted the Muscular Dystrophy Telethon in St. Louis for more than 30 years. They hosted it in Chicago, yeah. and I, I saw firsthand how you wanted to make a difference for, for other people, and I, I'm really curious what this night kind of means to you, to be here tonight and to see all these stories and, and, and kind of what's going through your mind right now. Uh, it's unbelievably emotional. Uh, I don't think I've been to any award that's been so inspiring, and uh, I was getting very nervous too walk those stairs, which are a lot wider than the balance beam, and uh, <laughs> I uh, cannot believe how many uh, inspiring stories are in the world, uh, not only today, but just to see that um, it starts with the little ones, and uh, what we learn from our parents, and from our educators, and from people around us, and uh, what feels inside that's the right thing to do. And, and people may not know this part, but your, <laughs> your first coach, right. Don Burkle, yeah. once worked at Musial and Biggie's restaurant. Is yes. that right? Yes. He's over there, John Burkle. He's from St. Louis. And uh, he told me a story how he worked there actually for only two days. <laughs> so, and it didn't end well, so I, maybe he can share that story with you later. But yes, he's here, and many of his members of his family are from St. Louis, and they're with us tonight. So it's a real thrill for us to have a family reunion. Thank you. Sir. So take us back to the Perfect Tens in 1976. What what do you remember about that time? Well, I do remember. 43 years ago. It doesn't feel like it's been such a long time. Um, that was the year that I met Bart, actually, a few months before that, which I didn't remember many years later. <laughs> well, first of all, my son busts my chops on the video. Uh, we, we did compete in the uh, American Cup. It was a competition in Madison Square Garden. And uh, that was actually my first time I got, the first time I got a perfect 10. But uh, the Olympics, of course, came up uh, in July of 76. And uh, I was so young, I was 14, but uh, I had already eight years of gymnastics in my backpack. And I thought I was, I knew what I was going to do there. I, I remember that uh, when I left the country, I said I hope to win a medal and if it's possible to be gold. But I had no idea about the fact that no history was made and no perfect tens were scored before because there was 
my only goal was just to be there and be sure that I don't go down from the balance. So, so what goes through your mind when you see, I mean, you don't see tens ever. What, what goes through, especially at the Olympics, what goes through your mind when you saw that? I don't, usually I don't watch the scoreboard. I, I kind of give myself a, a score on the base of how I thought I did. I thought I did a pretty good routine. I thought maybe a 9-9 would be a good score. And... Uh, yeah, and, that'd be a good score. And, uh, <laughs> and then I was getting ready for balance beam because that was my next event. And uh, I heard the big noise in the arena, and I turned around because I didn't know what happened. And I see the scoreboard coming around with a 1.00, which you know is not a good score. <laughs> and I looked at my teammates, and just, I just turned my head, and I said, what, something wrong with the scoreboard? Because I think I did better than one. <laughs> and uh, I had no idea that the scoreboard could not accommodate a 10. <laughs> Uh, because the people who created that, they said that nobody's going to score a 10 in the Olympics. Yeah. When you, when you came home from that Olympics, what was that like? Uh, together with the teammates, because we don't do this by ourselves, and uh, with the coaches and everybody who were a part of the success for so many years. We arrived at the airport, and... Uh, we were told everybody wears their medals. Uh, there will be people that will wait for you. I didn't know there were 10,000 people at the airport. And I remember I got out of the plane, and uh, when I saw so many people, I got scared, and I went back in the plane. <laughs> so my next teammate pushed me uh, out. And I was, I was very surprised because I didn't understand what happened because I have done all those routines for so many years. <laughs> before, and uh, there was just an amazing national celebration, and uh, the entire country was so proud for what uh, our team yeah. has done. 1984 was pretty good to you, Bart. Yes, yeah, certainly was, <laughs> yes. What are your memories of 1984? Well, you know, before that, of course, in fourth grade, I was walking around the gym class on my hands, and my fourth grade PE teacher said, hey, you know, you can be pretty good at gymnastics. I want to take you over to the high school and introduce you to John Burke. Well, maybe he could coach you a little bit. And so I think back tonight when I see all these youngsters out here doing inspiring things, I think here was a good man in my fourth grade class who offered a hand, gave me a little boost of support. He introduced me to a great coach who took me from my first handstand to the Olympics and then to my second coach who took me all the way to an Olympic gold medal in Los Angeles. So tonight I'm just overwhelmed with gratitude, not only the journey that I've been able to experience, but mostly the gratitude for the people I met along the way. And my biggest takeaway from tonight, I think this is not only one of the most important sports awards shows, but I think this is maybe the most important award show I've ever seen of any kind. Um, I, I truly, I truly believe, especially these days with how divided our country is, we need more of this. We need more people showing kindness and courtesy, and you all shine a spotlight on that. And I, Mike, as I, as I mentioned, we have a 13-year-old son, Dylan, who is the love of our life, and I think every 13-year-old needs to see this. They need to see the goodness of humanity and how you can pay it forward. And so tonight, not only do I feel validated and supported, but I also feel challenged to do even better. And thank you for doing that. Listen, it's our pleasure. You guys continue to pay it forward. Tell me about your involvement with Special Olympics and what it means to you. Well, in 1979, Coach Paul Zert uh, said, Special Olympics Oklahoma invited us to come and work with a couple of Special Olympics athletes. So I went up, I didn't have any idea how to work with these young men and women. There were six athletes, they weren't in good shape at all. We had two mats and we were on the grass outside. And I worked with a couple of these athletes and all of a sudden something started happening. And I helped this young man who was very overweight and clearly had never experienced any type of sports. And I taught him a forward roll. And to this day, which is 40 years ago, I'll never forget how I felt, because when he came back around and he looked up, the look of pure joy of accomplishment on his face said something to me. 
And it changed me in a way. I thought, wait a minute, everybody needs to have a chance to be included. Everybody needs to have a chance to experience that level of joy. It's not necessarily the gold medals. It's that ongoing incremental joy that you get from getting a little bit better. And to me, that's the inspiring thing about Special Olympics. Now there are 6.3 million athletes in 190 programs around the world experiencing the joy of being included, being welcomed, and being in a place where they can be their best. Tell people a little bit how you guys met and ended up having a romance and... <laughs> oh, the love story. Yeah, the love story. They don't want to hear that. Uh, just maybe oh. the short version. <laughs> okay. Uh, the short version starts with me. The long version is... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've been busted three times tonight. <laughs> so, 1976 American Cup, Madison Square Garden. It was March 28th, it was his birthday, he was turning 18. Uh, I was with uh, uh, some of the people in my delegation in Romania, and uh, we won the competition, we both won the competition, and at the end, we, uh, the newspaper said to Bart, why don't you lean over and give her a kiss on the cheek, and we were holding the trophies. And that was the first time we met. Many years later, when I left Romania, which is actually 30 years in two days. So I've been half of my life here. <laughs> so many years later, when I came to the States, when I left Romania, is I go back a lot and I do a lot of work with my foundation. Together we were doing a television show and uh, the host asked us when we first met. And in the same time, I said 1981 and he said 1976. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he looked at me and he said, don't you remember 1976 American Cup? I looked at him and I said, no. <laughs> and I, then I said, uh, Maybe I do remember it. It was a little blonde guy, but there were a lot, a lot of <laughs> blonde guys in the American team at the time. I'll tell you a funny story quickly how I, kept, I caught her eventually after all those yeah. years. Because 30 years ago next week will be when she came from Romania as a political refugee to the United States. And when she... When she came to the States, um, she didn't have many friends, she didn't have any support system, because literally she crossed the border in the middle of the night. I was trying to find her as a friend to just reach out and say, is there some way I can help you transition into your new life in the States? I'm sitting in my house in Ormond, Oklahoma. It's 11 a.m. and I'm reading the newspaper, and I look down there and it says, on the Pat Sajak show on CBS, he had a late night show for a couple of years. It said, Nadia Comaneci is gonna be on. So I put two and two together. I called a friend, Michael Weissman, who was working at CBS Late Night Television. And I called him and I said, hey, Michael, I see you're going to have Nadia Komenich on your show tonight. He goes, yeah. He said, we don't even know what to talk to her about. Do you know her? And I said, yeah, I've known her for several years. He said, are you in Los Angeles? And I said, no, I'm in Oklahoma. And he said, can you be in LA by 5 o'clock? And I said, yes. <laughs> And so I went to the airport, I changed clothes in the airplane bathroom with only a gymnast can do. <laughs> right? And I landed at CBS, they had a helicopter fly me across LA because it was during five o'clock rush yeah. hour. I landed at CBS Television City, they gave me two dozen roses, and I walked on the show in the second segment and said, welcome to America. And the rest right? is history. So. But I, I actually did two things. I handed her two dozen roses and my phone number. <laughs> <laughs> so you know the gymnastics trials are coming to St. Louis right before the Olympics. What can people expect? Well, we hear it's sold out. I hope mm -hmm. there's going to hold two tickets for us. Yeah, we'll work <laughs> it out. Li Lung said she's going to help us out. That Mr. Frank Viverito help? will help. Okay. You know, Frank and I have a lot in common. We're two average guys that married really impressive women. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Frank. <laughs> uh, just, I would like to, to thank you for honoring uh, us. I think that um, 
it just sounds that's bigger than life. <laughs> and uh, we still have a lot of things to put in a bag. And uh, this was a uh, huge inspiration for us this night. And uh, we are very happy that we could share with all of our friends that have been with us through the entire time. And um, we'll see you in St. Louis next year for the gymnastics. And we thank you both very much for being here. And congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations.